guys. Welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett. I get to do the fun stuff that I talk about all the time. This is so cool. Our goal, one goal, only goal that we'll ever have with this podcast is to bring great thinkers, great experts, great coaches, great language experts, great everybody, great thinkers to this podcast and help you think better so that you can use this information, go back and create a better practice and a better life. I'm going to do exactly that with one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to deal with in a dental practice, asking for money, which I am terrible at. So, and uh, you know how this works. I'm going to encourage you to share this podcast with your team members. So you as a dentist, you know how this works. You listen to all this stuff. You get all fired up. You get all excited and you don't share anything with your team members. This is a great one where you can just share it with them and go, Hey, I heard a great podcast. So let's set up some time to talk about it. That way it doesn't sound like you're pointing fingers or anything like that. You can say, Hey, look, it's just a great conversation, sir. And so I have three of my amazing coaches on. I've got Chris, Jenny, and Ariel. Thank you guys for being on. Hey, welcome. All right. Welcome. That's <laughs> that's the response of somebody who's been voluntold to be here. Oh, uh, Kirk, I love doing these podcasts with you. And it's even more fun when we get to have other team members on. I'm super excited to be here. And I know we all are. Yeah, this has been Absolutely. one of my most favorite segments because obviously we go in this without any planning except the concept <laughs> aspects of things. And I'll tell you, if you're following along at home and taking notes, which most of you aren't, so don't worry, we're taking notes for you. We created this document for our coaching clients. So basically what we do is we coach dentists and team members to create better systems, use better language, and language matters. And so we created this document and I didn't know it was going to be the hit that it was, but it's called <laughs> Say This, Not That. Now I'll give you the essence of the document. It's basically everything that people say in a dental practice around certain concepts. Today, again, we're going to be talking about money. And then we encourage you to use different language because you know how this works. If you use really great language, it creates value for patients. And so that those are the first two columns, what typical dental offices say, what you should consider saying. And then there's a third column, which is you can put what you want in that third column and uniquely uh, tailor it for your style of practice. And so this podcast goes along with that concept. So we're going to be talking about collecting payments. Let's talk about the inherent challenge with money. Okay. So like is collecting money in a dental practice a big deal or a small deal? Who <laughs> wants to go first? It's a huge deal. <laughs> Why? Because because it's the money that you are owed. And if you don't collect it at the time of service, it, it's first of all, it's not worth what it was the day you did the procedure, but it's much harder to collect it after the fact. People don't answer the phone. They don't read their mail. They don't they don't check their email. So you're so much better off when you collect it right then and there. Yeah. But let me speak to some fears. Collecting money is mean. It's we're not supposed to ask for money. <laughs> like you hear all this stuff. So, I mean, what, give us some clarity on this before we start using language. What do you think? Not mean. You're providing a valuable service to your patients and it's something that is worth something. It's worth a lot. It has value. We don't feel like it's mean when we go to the grocery store and we have to pay for our groceries. Right. Right. I, like, I don't think that someone's being mean to me when I go to a store and pay for the goods or services that I am receiving. Uh, for some reason, we, we have this different belief around dentistry and, and dental care that you know, it doesn't have that value or that worth, or especially for that time of service collection. Um, and we just need to like throw that limiting belief out the door, own the fact that these are valuable services that the doctor, the team, everyone deserves to be compensated for. And remember, it's a business that needs money to survive. Like bottom line, if we don't collect the money, the business can't continue. Amen, sister. Cash is to your practice what oxygen is to the body. Without it, both die. So like we want to create a healthy situation. And also too, I'll piggyback on that. You're usually very happy to pay when you're provided a valuable service. I love paying people that are like, oh my gosh, you've changed my life. And yes. And then, then I'll add one more thing before we get into the nuts and bolts. Like I believe that money spent on dentistry is one of the best investments a human being can make. We can prove that. 
And so my belief is that our belief is that what's your belief and what do your teams and team members believe? And so that's the journey you have to embark on is that what you do is crazy valuable. What you do is hugely helpful to people. And now you've got to translate that into how you communicate with people, right? And Ariel, you have a lot of experience at the front. Like what, what's the major hurdle, the major why behind dentists not getting this right? Um, I still haven't been able to figure out why dentists don't want to collect. <laughs> um, Makes no sense to you, right? <laughs> no. Like, it, like you said, it's your service. Like don't devalue your service. And team members, they are only concerned about collecting if they feel that coming from the uh, from the dentist, right? Or from the leadership. If the team member doesn't know any differently, they're going to collect, right? right? It's these notions that we put in our mind and think, or we start perceiving of who can pay and who can't pay. They wouldn't be here if they couldn't pay. Right? right? They know. We all know. We don't just leave the grocery store with our groceries and say, bill me. No, we're not doing the barter system anymore. So it's okay to collect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And so that might be the first thing to take notes on if you're a dentist is like, when you get the right thinking and the right language and the right person collecting the money, it makes it easy. They say, you're going to raise your fees, get back there and go to work. I'm collecting from her. She's going to pay before she schedules her next appointment. Let's stop giving all of this away. And you'll go, okay. You know, so that works too. All right, let's start with the most difficult ones. Can I, we're going to go into lightning round. Here we go. Like I hear this one all the time. This is one 25 years. Would you like to pay today? <laughs> so no. give us some no. better. Right. No, wait, 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 no, wait, wait, come on. No, thanks. Or, or, oh, wait, wait, worse yet. Like they don't ask for anything at all. And you just speed yeah. out the door as a patient. Yeah. So stop us on that one. How do we think better and talk better about that one? People, of course, nobody wants to, right? I mean, it's like, I don't want want to pay. I might value it. But if I don't have the, if I have the option to not to, I'm going to choose it. So we're not offering that option. How would you like to take care of today's investment portion? Ooh. Right? It's not. And you said that word earlier today. And I think if you if you take one big keyword away, it's that these are investments, right? It's not a fee, an investment. It's a it's a return. When we invest, we get a return in something. So I'm going to pose the question of how do you want to take care of this? Not do you want to take care of this? Yeah, awesome. And I think it starts from the day that we actually diagnose and treatment plan and set the patient up for that visit. So the first time they hear that they need to pay, you know, $500 shouldn't be the day that, you know, that they have the procedure and they're walking out the door after they should, they should know that um, because when we got them in the schedule, we told them, here's what you need to prepare for. This is what your investment will be to Jenny's point. I've seen the evolution in all of my years in dentistry. I started in 80, 1985 and it was, you know, it was a price. Then it was cost because that sounded better. Then we went to fee because that sounded a little bit better, but I love investment. I think, I think investment is wonderful because what Jenny said, it, it, implies you're going to get something in return, which means I'm going to have better health. I'm going to look better. I'm going to feel better. Um, so yeah, I, I think definitely that is the way to go. And Chris, Don't even you give started, me the option. You Sorry. started it. It goes back to systems. Like what is your system? Because anyone can ask someone to collect if they already know about it. Now, I may not want to drop the bomb on the patient, but I'm okay with collecting if they already know. So what's the system, as you said, did I present it to them? And then what's your system for checkout? There's no reason where you should never ask because you have a series of questions. Okay, did I schedule? Did I collect? Like, Did I go through my checklist? Are my notes in, right? So there's really no reason for you to ever miss part of it if you get yourself in a good rhythm and a good system of that. Um, and then you don't even have to think about, oh, yeah, now I have to ask. Yeah, I love it. And with the de design of a system, here's what's cool about designing a system like this. You can diagnose 
What's going wrong? Is it the, what are the steps of the system? So if your collections aren't working, you don't have to blame a person. You can go back and diagnose the system. Ultimately, if somebody can't follow a perfect system, then that's the question you have to ask at the end, but uh, it makes this a whole lot easier. Um, some of you guys have read this book. Anne-Marie Gorsica wrote a fantastic book on how to collect. And one of the things, she's, she's like amazing. So she says this in her book. If you have someone at your front desk that cannot say, will you be paying today cash, check, or credit card, and they're confident you have the wrong person. Like she'll mm -hmm. go that far and just say, listen, whoever has this role, this is a huge role for the financial health of your practice. And they got to they gotta have no problem saying, how do you want to take care of that today? These three methods and then pause and give the patient the bug eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and not apologize for that whole process. So it's really important to have the language. Again, I love the whole idea of thinking. We got to get the systems. We got to set the patient up for success and then use the verbal language uh, with that. Um, I love what you said about being confident because we talked about this in a previous podcast about using minimizing language. And the same can happen when you're collecting money. It doesn't just have to be in the back with a little bit of bleeding or some decay, but when you're collecting, you should be confident about it. You shouldn't apologize. Don't, don't go, Oh, it's $500, you know? So I think that that's really important to, you know, the language matters, but it's also the, the way that somebody is saying it, the confidence that they have behind the ask. I and there's no reason to not very directly ask your team members, hey, are you comfortable and confident talking about money? Because if you have an entire team that's not, you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to role play. But if you have someone that's like, game on, I would love to be the point person for collections, then let's utilize that strength and that confidence that that person has. Yeah. You know how they say bees and dogs can sense fear? So can patients. So <laughs> I know when you're freaking out, you know? And so patients, not because they're bad people, they'll exploit that fear. And that's what just human beings do. So a couple other things you see is, you know, I've heard dental office say that we collect at time of service. Uh, give us a better way of saying that. How do we rethink how we verbalize that? So I, I, I like, again, you know, like, let me help you with your with your investment options or your investment portion for the date of service. Let me help you understand how we take care of your investment portion on the time of service. Um, again, it's 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 just driving home those value words around around the service or around collecting. And I just want you to continually layer those in. Yeah, I love the whole, let me help you with this. Here's another thing you can consider. Let me help you with how patients pay for dentistry here, which implies two things. Everybody else does it. And guess who else will? You will. So, and I you know, like that. Let me help you because it, it also implies that I'm, I'm helping the patient, right? I'm, we're in it together. Our job is to help to make this as easy as possible, whether it's the procedure itself or the ways to pay for it. So um, so I love that. I love being able to have that conversation and, and let them know we're on their side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That one's also great for past due balances. Let me help. Let, let me help you get caught up. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that. Because, you know, the natural dynamics around money and people is if you put them in the schedule and they have a balance, you can count on two things. The balance will grow and they'll also cancel their appointment. Because people that owe you money, I don't know who said this, but it's great. They don't like you. And so don't get into a position where balances grow. Bad things happen. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing that we've heard for more than 25 years is our office policy is <laughs> help us rethink and say that. I mean, again, I'm, I'm yeah. going to lean into how I can help you. Let me, you know, let's see how I can help you. Let me help you understand how we take care of this in the practice. Um, it, it's all about what I can do for you, not mm -hmm. what you're going to do for me. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think you need to give yourself and your patients a little bit of grace. If you've been operating for 15 years and people are walking out the door and you're sending them a statement, you're not going to turn that around tomorrow. Right. <clears throat> so let your patients know, let them know what to prepare for. Um, if they're not prepared today, that's totally fine. Let me just 
help you understand what's going to change the next time you come in. We're going to expect this. This is what it's going to be. Um, but for today, we understand um, you're a great patient. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to just drop this on you right now, that kind of thing. So I think that you need to give yourself some grace to get used to the idea and then also give your patients some grace because you have trained them to not pay. So yeah. now we have to retrain them to pay. As coaches, we've all heard a hundred times, but, but our patients won't do it because we've always done it this way. Right. And what are those words, Kirk? <laughs> Seven most expensive words in business. My stomach was turning when you said that. Exactly. Right. That's the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you got to be careful. Now, obviously we're having fun with you guys. So don't take this the wrong way. We want you to think better, have a little fun and learning has got to be a little bit fun in this whole thing. One more thing I was just thinking about when you guys were talking about policies, we're big fans of systems. And they guide behavior. They improve your processes. But systems really are designed to assist, not insist. There are going to be times where you're just going to have to use your best judgment as a team member. And you as a dentist have got to give the team member a little bit of grace. So it's not a severe right. black and white thing. Um, would you Would you guys agree with that? Oh, yeah, for sure. I would for agree. Sure. I mean, when I presented treatment, right, my system was I scheduled the appointment and then reviewed the investment. But sometimes patients don't like that. So I say, okay, well, let's review it. And now let's get you scheduled, right? There's small tweaks that you have to allow your team members to make, but they have to understand the expectations and the end goal, right? The end goal was still that I got them scheduled and still that I collected. How we went about it depended on the patient. Right? I wanted to guide it towards their experience and what made them comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this uh, this document, the say this, not that, the, the reason that we have this third column is so there's some variation. There's some authenticity to your practice, to your team members, because we do want you to be authentically you. Right. We we want you to be confident and comfortable and you're most confident and comfortable in your own skin. So if you would never say something one way, don't force yourself into it. If you feel like I am so confident getting them scheduled first and then reviewing the financials because that just gives me that boost, then do that, mm -hmm. right? Do the thing that feels really authentic to you that's going to give you that confidence. Yeah, go back to that just a little bit because, you know, you hear this whole thing. I don't want my team to have scripts. Like, I don't want them to be robots. Our whole goal is to give you you know, some, some lanes here to work with. And ultimately the team members have to use their own language and it's got to be fundamentally, you know, aligned with your philosophy. Would you guys agree? That's why we created this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not something that you're just going to hand to your team members and say, here, do this. Like this is going to take probably several team meetings. I would suggest like take a team meeting and work on each section at a time and really talk about what feels most comfortable. And in that third column to write down what your agreements are, because, you know, the agreements are there to help you to remember. And it's also there to help to keep us accountable. You know, if we have said that this is important and we want to change the, the, the face of the practice and we want the practice to be profitable, then we have to start collecting, right? So the why that's, that's there. We talk about the why then when we make these agreements, it's easy for us to say, you know, if somebody says, Hey, Chris, you, you know, we agreed that this was how we were going to do this and you're not saying it this way. Let's talk about how we can, how we can make it easier for you to have these conversations with the patients or, to your points earlier, am I even the right person in the seat? Right. I mean, right. maybe it, maybe that person is not is not right for that job, but they might shine somewhere else. So figuring that out is really important. Absolutely. And during these conversations, you made a great point of find out what is comfortable. But I even ask when team members say that something isn't comfortable, they're like, "Oh, I can't say that. That's not. That doesn't feel right." Figure out why. Right. Because it might be that it is actually uncomfortable and it just doesn't flow very well in the current system or process. Or it might just be, oh, I'm not comfortable saying that or I'm not comfortable presenting treatment over X amount because I don't have that myself. 
Mm -hmm. So you can kind of start learning. And I always tell everyone, you don't know what people are hiding in their couch. So (laughs) don't assume they can't afford it, right? right? But our team members, they are the ones talking to the patient. So we have to figure out why is it uncomfortable? Can we overcome that with them? Right. If not, okay, what do we do instead? Right. Yeah. yeah. Would be we helpful. got some great feedback from something like this at our awesome to the top study club, where we were talking about, you know, investment. And one of the docs said, my team isn't comfortable referring to very small dollar amounts as investment. So mm-hmm. we calibrated around it and we made the decision that we have to hit a certain dollar amount to be comfortable using that word, right? So they had, like Ariel said, they had this conversation around what feels right to us, what feels authentic. I don't like saying your investment portion is $3. <laughs> right. So let's piggyback on that very concept because I love that. I was going there. So it's easy to you know talk about the layups where it's $100 or $200 or $350. But let's say I'm a dentist listening. I'm like, well, I do what's called comprehensive restorative treatment. These treatment plans are bigger in nature. Yes, you do. And we're going to help you with that. So let's start with the thinking behind a bigger case fee. First, let's talk about the deposit component. Well, you know, you hear people say this all the time. We need this up front. Help Help us think better and say better with that, you know, <laughs> because in a larger restorative, you know, treatment plan, you are going to require some type of a deposit. So mm-hmm. how would I think about that? I usually like to say it's it's um, to, to secure the appointment in order to secure the appointment in doctor's time or to reserve the time in doctor's schedule. Um, this is what we're going to do. We're going, you know, we're going to ask you for $250 today, and then we'll get your appointment scheduled. And when you come back in your, your investment will be whatever. Um, I think that makes sense. Um, and, and the thing too, that deposit is less about the money and more about the commitment. It's more about the predictability. If I have put down $250, I'm not going to cancel that two and a half or three hour appointment. But if, if I have no skin in the game, that's, that's huge chunk of time for somebody to just on a whim decide, oh, I don't think I want to go today and and not show up. Absolutely. I mean, Every medical procedure, I think I've even paid in full, not even just the deposit. So we expect it, right? Bigger procedures. We know, right? That we're just waiting. We're not going to say, oh, do you want me to pay for this now? (laughs) We're just waiting for them to tell us, okay, we're going to go ahead and collect this to secure the appointment. And patients will say, okay. Mm -hmm. Or they'll tell you they can't. And then all you say, okay, let's talk and figure out what, when you can, right. It might just be timing and that's okay too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this has been said for a long time. I believe it's true is 70% of all case acceptance failures happen between the treatment discussion and the financial arrangements. You can't rehearse this enough. So the confidence in all fairness to people and that are in the admin role, a lot of times we just throw grenades at them and go figure this out. They've got to be intimately trained in how to communicate. And I like the idea of confidently supporting what was, you know, communicated in the back and say, okay, let's get you started. And so here's how this works. And I'm going to schedule the appointments. Now, a big thing is obviously separating the appointments and the financial arrangements. Those have no relationship. And that might be another uh, podcast. But if you're separating your appointments and correlating with the financial aspect, unlink those as much as possible. Don't say this is going to be four appointments. We're going to break it up evenly over four appointments because when I run out of money, I'm going to cancel cancel the correlating appointment that doesn't work for me financially. So you want to make sure that they understand these are two separate bonds of trust. We're going to create a trust, uh, you know, bond of trust on the t- on the time side of things and then the financial piece. And so um, I, I really like that a lot. And then would you guys also agree when it comes to the financial aspects, it's better to get all of that prearranged, even when it comes to the deposit and we're starting the restorative dentistry. Give us some thoughts on how to better think and say about that when you're talking about the balance, not just the deposit. I mean, that just goes back to the system and the clarity. And I I always want to have my financial arrangements completely signed, set in, set in stone, completed prior to the patient sitting down in the chair or walking in that day. Mm-hmm. Um, I love uh, Barrett's No Surprises, 
right? You know, we, we want our patients to be comfortable and confident when they arrive that day and not worrying about what happens. And it might be that there's a few payments leading up to it, or it might be one before one day of and one after, but let's get to that day with that plan already set in stone, signed and scanned into the patient's chart. Yeah. Well, you have to think patients are already worried about what's going to be happening once they're in the chair, right? So let's already take one more fear of, okay, how am I going to pay for this? What am I going to, let's talk about that ahead of time. So that way when they show up, All we have to do is worry about making them comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've called, and I know curfews don't like confirmation calls, but I've called before and patients like, yep. And I know I'm going to owe this tomorrow. I'll see you then, Ariel. And it's like, yep, (laughs) perfect. Like they already know. And that way it's no surprises. So when they come in, they're like, do you want me to pay you now or when I leave? I'm like, well, I'll do it now because you'll be numb and I don't want you drooling on me when you leave. (laughs) See, that's... That's bro. That's not a confirmation call. That's a CC. You're con- you're confirming and collecting before. Yeah. You see how you like you that? Like train that. them well. <laughs> oh, I love it. They, you you set the standard for all those patients. They already know. Like she's she's the money lady. She's gonna she's <laughs> yeah. gonna she's gonna make me pay. And um, I love that. Now let's add another layer of complexity to this whole game. So now we're going to talk about third-party financing. Here at Act Dental, we're huge fans of care credit and other vehicles that help patients pay. So let's add that in. And you've heard this, you know, team members say, well, you can fill this paper out. It's a loan, you know, or a health (laughs) credit card And their hands are shaking while they're handing. So help us think better and say better about the quote unquote loan. I think you want to advocate and help the patient as much as they can through that process. But even before that begins, uh, when when we know that we're going to be utilizing financing or we're going to we're going to be presenting financing, uh, let let me help you understand how a lot of patients are able to to afford this treatment right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. and I would say just be honest with it as well, right? I mean, it's. You don't have to say loan, right? But you, you can tell them it is a healthcare credit card. So the benefit is you can use it here, here, and here. And mm-hmm. I always throw in the vet because that's where everyone's like, oh, yeah, I spend money there. Yep. But, <laughs> then, and then I always just honest, you know, if you do offer a promotion, you know, we offer six months, no finance. Now, I will tell you, you have to be able to pay those off. So that way there's no surprises. So they don't come back and blame you of, mm-hmm. oh, well, you tricked me into using this, right? Mm-hmm. So just but give it to them of how, let me benefit you. Let me show you how you can use this. I'm going to give you all the information and you can make the decision. Yeah. I love that you mentioned the vet, Ariel. I utilized care credit myself at the vet. And when I've presented financial options to patients, I've actually been able to say, hey, I have experience with this myself. This is how it went for me. This is what it, you know, this is how I made sure to take care of it and pay it off in time within the promotional period. So I could authentically talk about it worked. I got the care that my, that my little love needed immediately. And that gave the patient confidence because it was like, okay, you like, you've been there, you've done that, right? We don't want to go first. We don't want to be alone. We want to know that someone else has done it and that it's going to be okay. Yeah, I love that. If you guys are listening very carefully, instead of being the adversary here, you're being the advocate, you know, like here, let me help you understand how not only this dentistry is going to change your life, but you can also use this other places. Also, too, you're going to be caught in that conversation constantly about the whole payment plan. Can we make payment plans? This becomes your perfect, you know, pivot and support of something. Say, you know, help help us through the whole payment plan thing, because patients ask this, can I do payment plan? What do you guys normally say when that comes up? You can do payment plans. Let me help you understand how that works. We utilize a third party (laughs) called X, Y, and Z. And this is is how you can make payments. Yeah. Let them know this is how we can do payments. Now I will say, this is the biggest thing I always hear, but they didn't qualify. Mm. The doctor's like, but Ariel make payments for them because they didn't qualify for care credit. <laughs> Let's just think through this. <laughs> it's a very large company. They know how to collect money and they don't qualify for care credit. Yet I'm going to willing to make payments for someone who's proven to have bad credit history. <laughs> Usually when yes. you're like, okay, they didn't qualify. They probably shouldn't qualify for payments with us either. Mm-hmm. Right. 
right. where that and, would be the prepaid, right? The let's yeah. let's begin making payments and build, you know, building up that credit to go towards it, yes. not let's begin making payments after. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And you didn't sign up to be a bank. You didn't. Right. So and, let's remember but, that. But it's, that. You know, the doctors are hard. They want to just have a handpiece in their hand and do those procedures. But you have to think about what is the outcome of that. If the pay, like Ariel said, if they don't qualify, if they're their money is not good enough for care credit, then I don't think that we should be extending them that courtesy because we've said this for how many years? If if a patient is tight at the end of the month, what bills are going to be left unpaid? They're not going to be their mortgage. They're still going to pay that or their rent. They're still going to buy food. They're still going to pay their utilities. They're not going to pay their doctor. So you don't want to get into that situation because yeah. then- you know, it just, it's uncomfortable for everybody that like P Kirk said, the patient won't like you after that because now you, he owes you money. So you're, you're just setting yourself up for a really bad outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you're a team member or dentist listening, just send us all this stuff. Cause we, this is all we do all day long is take these obstacles and make them opportunities in your practice. And so if you're a team member, you're thinking, oh my gosh, we have a, we have a handful of these patients that would fit that category. Always think about how you can be helpful. So here's one, instead of get, saying, fill out this application, just say, Mrs. Jones, with your permission, let's do this. How about we collect some information and then I'll share with you, let's see what options you have available and I'll help you every step of the way. It's a totally different thing than you fill this out. You're going to get declined anyway. At least give them every opportunity to say, hey, listen, I got your back. I'll help you as much as you possibly can. That's just a better head and heart thinking um, if you're going to be working with patients up front. So um, just think about that in that whole process. Um, they've made it much easier with care credit. I mean, absolutely. it used to be cumbersome and, and people just didn't want to do it. I I've observed so many people handing an application and even sending the patient home to do it. So I think, you know, now the portal that they use, you can just go in there and really it's just a couple of different pieces of information and it'll, it'll spit out exactly what the patient can afford, what the payment will be, what the interest will be, if that's what they're doing. So I think, it, you know, don't don't um, discount the idea that it's too hard to do or you don't have time. Yeah, they've actually even made QR codes now specific mm -hmm. for your office. So if you ask them, do you have a smartphone? Yep. Here's a QR code, scan it. And then that takes your practice information. So it's even faster. That's great. And then even if they get declined, now you know where to lead your talking points, as Jenny said, is that's not the end of the road. Okay, right. it doesn't mean they can't afford it. Now we say, okay, do we need to make payments ahead of time? You know, do we need to ask family members? Like, do you have other savings? Like, do you just need to move your money around? Like, just get them thinking. And it's okay to have silence because, right, they have to think. We don't know their situation. Sometimes they're just thinking. They're not thinking of ways to say no. They're trying to figure out, how do I make this work? Let them come to you with a solution and it may work. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so just again, just to remind you, you know, getting this right in your dental practice, yes, it creates a healthier practice now. But I also want you to think about what type of patient's going to be referred in the future, like Ariel was referring to, as you get a team member and you support them to be better on the verbal skills, patients will come in six months from now, six years from now and go, I know you don't take my insurance. I have to pay up front and you can go, yes, welcome. <laughs> and so they become great advocates and you start to attract other patients who like and think the same way and value the same thing. So it becomes more than just an immediate thing that helps the practice. It's actually a great long-term vision uh, philosophy. And I could also say this, like, these are little micro victories. When your team members like get a little layup and they're like, I listen to the podcast, I use it at work. Woo! And then I did the positive thing. It works. It's a great thing to celebrate in a morning hall because now it's like layering confidence with everybody else. You're going to see other team members start to use it. And then we start using each other's language. Then we start back. So make sure you share those micro victories because they become collective victories over time. And it just changes the overall culture. And you will eventually have an entire team of people saying, Dentistry is one of the best investments you'll ever make, Mrs. Jones. You're in excellent hands. So 
cool. This is so fun. I have like 19 more questions. Can we do <laughs> You guys have worked it. All right. Any last thoughts <laughs> on how to better think and communicate about collecting money in a dental practice? The one thing I just always want people to remember is we invest in what we value. And what does that mean? Wait, explain that. <laughs> if we find value in something, we are we are willing to pay for it with our time and with our money. So so again, we have these limiting beliefs. We got to let let those fly out the door. And the these are valuable services. And if we can communicate value to our patients, they are going to make the investment. Love it. Mm hmm. And I think you don't, don't, um, don't think you don't need to practice this or you only need to go over it once. I think it's important to practice it over and over again and test out these, ver these new verbal skills, you know, just like anything else, if you're going to get a dress for the prom, right, you're going to try on a bunch of them, just try on a bunch of different phrases and, and do it together as a team so that you're not, you're the first time you are using this language is not with a patient. So, you know, go through the process, do your due diligence, um, practice it for a while, and then, and then be able to communicate to the patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ariel, any last thoughts? I think just getting the whole team involved and having everyone understand, okay, what is our system? What is our process? You know, outside of what are we going to say, but how are we going to do this? And you'll see the confidence because they'll just know they're like, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And then it takes the fear out of it because now they have practiced it. Everyone does it the same way. It's not, oh, well, Ariel does it differently than her. So who do we listen to? Um, and I think doctors just encourage, right? And help them and say, Hey, I understand this is hard and it's not easy. And don't let them tell you why I've tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> right. We, well, how many times did we try it? So just get everyone involved in the process because collecting comes from the entire team. Yeah. And let's just call this out too. You as a dentist, you take a lot of continuing education, but 95% of it is all technical. Like mm -hmm. there's not a lot of education and help and support for team members and how to collect money. So make sure you take these opportunities and use them wisely. Because again, when you create a better practice and a better life, now you can do more dentistry. So um, it allows for better breathing, less chest pain. Uh, I mean, we could go on and on and on. So I'm going to encourage you guys, if you're listening and you're struggling with any of this stuff, make sure you check out our events. We have events coming up where we have divisional events for not only the admin team, but a hygienist, chair site assistant. So Act Dental here is not just all about making the dentist better. We do do a lot of that, make them, but we also have our best practices seminar where you're going to see all of this stuff come out in detail. I promise you, if you come, you're going to be completely exhausted when you leave because <laughs> I don't stop talking for four days. And so like, I love this stuff. We're going to continue to bring you all of of these things in this series and more series ahead. So please let us know what you're, what you'd like to see more of. We'll line it up and uh, again, keep showing up and we're going to keep giving you best practices so you can make your practice and your life better. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you coaches for being on. This is so fun. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I always enjoy this. This is like my easiest thing of the, that I get to do all day. So as you can see, my piece of paper has like, I think it has four words on it. That's it. Like I just, I just got to show up and surround myself with smart people. That's the final lesson here is just surround yourself with great people. You'll be okay. So, Hey, um, thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed today, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends. And if you really enjoyed the podcast, can you do us one more favor? Just give us a four or five star review because what that helps us do is find more people like you. We love this profession. We're going to keep bringing it for you guys. So until we see you guys next time, or you hear from us next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day.